This is Building a Blog with Rails 5 and Bootstrap 4, Part 5. In this episode, we're going to set up rich text editing so that we can create a better blog post. At the moment, all we can do is put in plain text. We can't really even put in things like bold text or italic or anything like that, much less images. There are a number of options for tools that we can use to do this, but the, the best, in my opinion, is the free Tiny MCE software. I believe this is what WordPress uses, and it's really robust. Um, it's very customizable, and it can do all sorts of things, and it will meet our needs perfectly. To get started, click on Download. We're not actually going to download anything, but I'm going to copy this script tag right here um, that's linking to the uh, content delivery network. So copy that, and then we're going to jump over to the code, and we're going to paste it in. If you recall, we have back in the code in our app views layouts, we have this author, and we also have the blog. And the blog is what guests to the website will see. The author layout is what people who are writing content will see. So we really want to just put this here, and I think we can just leave that right there. So because the author is the only one we expect to be doing any rich text editing, we don't actually need this in both layout files. We just need it inside the author. So we can save this, and we should be good. The next thing that we need to do is actually set up the text area and the JavaScript that's going to trigger this um, rich text editor. So if we jump back over to um, the tiny MCE thing, you'll see what's happening is when this page loads, we're calling tiny MCE init and then telling it what the selector is. And there's a lot of customization that we're going to end up doing. If we try this, well, let's just try this. So if I copy this and put it um, right below the other, and then let's navigate to our um, posts in here and just see what happens. So if I edit this and then I refresh, so when I refresh it, it gives me these two text editors. But if I click on it through the nav bar and then on the title, oops, that's not what I wanted. If I edit it, you'll see that nothing happens. And that has to do with Rails 5 Turbolinks. So I encourage you to go to um, GitHub and check out the Turbolinks documentation. If you just search for Turbolinks, you can find it. It's not Turbolinks Classic, it's Turbolinks. And this is a really uh, interesting thing to read through and understand how it works. The thing that is actually important to us at the moment is this document add event listener turbolinks load. So what this does is every time turbolinks changes the page it triggers this event and this is what we're going to hook into to get our tiny MCE editor to load properly. So if we go back over here we actually want to get rid of this second script tag, save this, jump back, jump over to application.js and let's um, paste this in. And I know from working with this before that I need to call tinymce.remove when the page loads. And then I'm actually going to uh, undo that for a second. Copy this and paste this here. So when the page loads, we're going to remove previous instances of tinymce and then we're going to trigger it to load again. Um, let's try this. So if I go back here and I'm just going to refresh and then if I click edit now it's loading everything. If I click my post and click edit it's still working. If I refresh it's still working. So you can see we have the editor all the time now. Or the editors rather. Okay. Now that this is working it's really ugly so let's deal with that a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the code and open up posts, uh, I guess it's the form. So in the authors folder in posts, let's look at the form here. And let's see, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, I don't want my body and my description to get the tiny MCE editor. I just want the body to get it. So let's go back to 
application JS and I'm going to change this to be selector text area post body and this ID is automatically generated by Rails for us because we're in this form for the post and the attribute is called the body. So I just saved that. And let's go back and let's reload this and see what it looks like. So now we have our description down here and only our body gets the tiny MCE. What I think I would like to have is the title, the banner image URL, and the description over here in some kind of small left column and then have the editor over here in a bigger column. So let's do that. So if I go to my form and I'm just gonna put right here a row and then let's do a column of three And then let's put the title and the banner image URL inside there. And then the description. And then I need another row, or uh, column rather, and we'll say, uh, and we'll make this one nine. And I'm going to put the body inside there and we'll see what this does. Okay, it's a little more organized. It's not beautiful, but it's okay for me for the moment. Um, I don't really care for having this label here necessarily. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just show that this works. So if I highlight some stuff, make that bold. Um, make that italic and update this and then we'll click edit and you'll see that it shows up here but you probably just noticed something kind of weird if I go to the show page it's printing out HTML tags in here and that's because what this editor is doing is decorating the text with various HTML tags to make it look right um, so let's go back. Oh, something funny is happening right now. That should not be blank. All right, we'll look into that momentarily. Um, the first thing I want to do is just fix this post so that it looks right. So in the blog posts, let's look at underscore post right here and that's not right we want to see show so on body I'm just gonna call HTML safe and we'll see what this looks like I'm not sure that I did that right oh I think I have the, the post is actually in here as well so I need to put this there With different versions for the different uh, users. Okay, so if I go to the blog and I click read, now it shows up right. It's got spacing, it's got bold, it's got italic. Okay, some people are probably noticing the duplication in the code and there definitely is some right now. Um, we have a show post in the author section and a show post in the posts or the, the blog section. Um, we might deal with that later. I don't know. Um, right now it's really simple, so I don't really care too much. Um, I was really more thinking about the security when we made that decision, but anyway. So one quick note while we're here. Make sure that you never use this HTML safe method on content that you're getting from just any user. Um, basically what this does is it says whatever normal things that we would do to protect ourselves from things like uh, dangerous JavaScript or whatever, don't do them. We just, you know, let everything through um, as it is, just read it as HTML. And that's fine if it's something that you know that the is only coming from like a credible author or whatever, but you don't want to let just a, a user in a comment box paste in whatever HTML or JavaScript they want because that can be really bad for your other users. So the last thing I want to do is take a look at what features we can add to our text editor. 
So if we jump back here um, and we look at one of our posts here, um, right now it's fairly limited. Uh, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff, but they're very just text oriented things. Um, for instance, we don't have the ability to put images right now. Um, we don't have the ability to embed videos. So we would like to be able to do those things. And if we go back over to the Tiny CE, Tiny N, little Tiny MCE website, uh, we can click on the docs, and it will tell us all sorts of things about adding plugins and so on and so forth. So if we click Add Plugins, um, there are tons of things we can do. Um, let's say start with this code sample. So this is going to give us uh, a code snippet that we're just going to copy for now. And I'm going to jump back over and put this, uh, where was that? Application.js. So I'm just going to put this inside here the way they have it. So I'm going to put that on a new line. And we'll save this. And back in our code, or I mean our browser, we'll refresh. And this adds a, well, it removed a bunch of stuff, which is weird. We don't want that. Um, but now we can add code here, which is kind of cool. So I could do like, if I click OK, it adds it in a in a box here with some syntax highlighting, which is really neat. But we need to fix this. I don't know why that removed everything, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so if we jump back to the code and look at what we have done, what we actually did is we specified that this is all we want in our toolbar. So I'm gonna paste in some other stuff that we want. And you'll see when we go back that this pipe symbol creates a separation, so I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna refresh this and we get undo, redo, some format stuff, bold, italic, so on and so forth. And there may be other things that you wanna add and you just need to look through the, the plugins for the basic stuff that maybe we're missing here right now. Um, anyway, I wanna add in a couple other things and just show you how it might work. Um, so let's see, maybe image. So we need to put plugins, image, and then in the toolbar we'll say image. So um, back in our code, we'll put image right here. I think you just listed out. And then I'm just gonna type image there and we'll see what this does. So now we have this and if we click it, it's gonna ask us for a source. So let's go over to pixels which is the free stock photo thing I was showing you before. Um, let's just grab something and we'll copy the image address and paste this. Let's actually just put it in the middle here. We can drag this, make it bigger. In a later episode, I'm gonna restyle all of this so it doesn't look so wonky. Um, if I just click all right, then it puts it in here. This thing is huge, so we want to like scale it down. And if I save this, we should have an image right in the middle. And we do, so that's pretty cool. So there are a ton of things over here, obviously, that you can play with. Um, I'm definitely not going to go through everything. Um, let's check out this media. So we have media and media. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see what this does. And we'll just put media. So we'll save that and jump back over to our browser. Edit this post. And let's see what this gives us. So, so we can insert a video now. So let's go find something on YouTube. That's kind of funny. Let's see what this is about. So we're going to copy the embed code here. And 
what's really cool is back in here, if I just, let's go down to the bottom. If I click insert, give it an embed code, it's going to put it right in there and it actually goes ahead and loads it. So we'll update this. And so now our video shows up down here at the bottom. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else might you need? So we have link, that's just something so that you can actually put links. Um, so we'll put link and link in there. In there. Um, one other kind of useful thing uh, is code so that you can actually see what the code that TinyMCE is creating behind the scenes is. Um, so let's do that. Let's put link and code and then after that you can uh, go in and play with it yourself and um, explore. So I'm just going to put link right here because it's kind of a formatting thing and then code is kind of its own thing so I'm going to put it out toward the end. Save that and go back and check out what we got. So now we have the source code option. And this tells you um, what the what the code that TinyMC is generating is, and you can actually edit it. So I could put strong here and make this bold. I think. Yeah, so now Fanny is bold. Um, and this link, I can put a URL. And I can set the target to a new window or none. I'm just going to make it a new window. And if we save, so now we have a link here that's bold. If I click this, it should open up Google in a new tab. Cool. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Um, I definitely encourage you to go read through all the crazy things that TinyMCE can do. Um, some stuff we didn't talk about. Um, you can uh, add themes. I don't think they have a lot of their own, but you can actually create your own if you get really into it. Um, you can customize the, the way that things look inside the editor. Um, I don't feel an urge to do that right now, but you might want to make the font bigger or that sort of thing, and they have some documentation about how to do that. One last thing. Back in here, if we, if we add a code sample, let's make it Ruby, and we'll say def hello, hello, just keep it super simple. You can see they have the syntax highlighting. If I update this though, it's just going to show up here kind of in this uh, like code font but the styling is a little off. We'll, we can fix that later. Um, what you want to do probably is add in a CSS library that will colorize your, or add syntax hi highlighting to your code. Um, there's a really cool one called Prism.js, and I'm not going to go through it right now, but um, it's definitely worth taking a look at. I've used it before, and it's awesome. Um, and it will it'll make your code look great if you're doing some kind of display. Alright, that's all I've got, so I will talk to you next time.